I want to be able to fly around in the game Pwn Adventure 3. Especially because my first attempt at making a fly hack was rather bad. I was only able to change the behavior of the jump by jumping very high and float down slowly. And I could also somewhat freeze myself in the air, but also very glitchy because gravity was pulling down. So it was not really like you imagine flying in game. So let's try this again on Windows. To fly around, we need to find where the position of the player is stored in memory. And so now we need to figure out a clever way to use the incremental scanning of Cheat Engine to find it. And I have been wondering about that because we don't really know how the X, Y and Z coordinates are stored. We also don't know the orientation of the coordinate system, so we couldn't say if walking in this direction we increase or decrease the X value. I mean, you can take a guess and just see if it works and if you find nothing, try the opposite. Like with any creative puzzle, there are many ways how you get to the solution. Then I was watching a guided hacking video and there they were scanning for the height position. That makes sense, it's very likely that when you are higher or lower the value would increase or decrease. So let's start our value scan with a first scan for an unknown initial value. We find 168 million values again and now we want to increase that value. So we switch to the game, walk to a higher slot and rescan for that increased value. 825,000 left. For good measure, we can scan for an unchanged value now because we haven't moved, down to 471,000 possible addresses. Now let's look around a bit because that can change memory values, but we shouldn't affect the position. Scan again for unchanged value, 253,000 left. So let's decrease the value again and walk to a lower point. Next scan, 38,000 left. We slowly get there. Looking around but not moving again, we can see that this already changed some values. So unchanged value scan. Hit it a few times, down to 22,000. Then let's increase the value again by going to a higher point, 7,000 left. And you get the idea, we keep doing that for a bit longer and keep scanning. Hopefully we can bring the amount of possible addresses further down. And we make slow but steady progress. But eventually we reach a point where we have a lot of similar values that seem to really be connected to the position. So I thought I could maybe jump, which shouldn't affect my position. So I keep rescanning for unchanged value, uh, but oh, oh, these values now look bad. We can also add all of them to the address list and then toggle the checkbox in the front. You can hit space when they are selected meaning that Cheat Engine will constantly set the value to the original one. In theory, if this is the true source for the player's position, this should freeze the player at a certain height. But when jumping down, we just fall. So changing these values has zero effect, which means none of them are the value we want. We cannot use them to teleport around. Crap, we screwed up. The jumping up and down seem to have affected the position a little bit and we have lost important values during the scan. So let's delete the address and do a whole scan again. This time without jumping, I won't bore you, so let me just fast forward. I got it down to 129 possible values. So I added all of them to the address list and now we do a freeze test again. We select half of the addresses and freeze them. Now we can jump from this rock, but no effect. This means none of these addresses actually control the player's position and we can delete them. And we repeat this process in a binary search fashion. Next, again, we select half of the remaining addresses. Ooh, see how we glitch out when we try to jump? We are immediately pulled back to our current position. This means that one of these addresses actually controls our position. So let's delete the addresses that we didn't select. And we repeat this process now of always selecting half and sorting them out. This can take a bit, but eventually we get it down to just a few candidates and find the real value. This one looks good. So let's see what happens when we modify the value. Let's set it to 2000. Yep, we teleported a little bit into the air and fell down. So how can we find the other coordinate values now? Well, typically you store a coordinate or a position in a simple struct or array, which means the other values should be right next to each other. So let's open the memory view and put it next to the game window. Now observe. When we turn the camera, we see multiple values updating. So these values seem to correlate to the camera view direction. 
And when we keep the camera straight, then these values seem to be updated when we walk around. We see three packs of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Maybe X, Y, and Z. Our value that we can control was at address 0, 9, 8. So these three could be our position vector. So let's add these addresses to the address list and give them names X, Y, and Z. And when we move around, we see them update. This looks great. Let's try to modify the X coordinate. Let's teleport to zero. Here we are. We are somewhere under the map. Ah, we are here. Above us is the Blocky's Revenge Challenge room. We can even change the other coordinate. Let's do 40,000. Oh, we landed somewhere on the beach. Let's play around with it a bit more. Oh, no. The game crashed. No. This means our addresses are now useless. No, 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 no. Crap, we have to redo it all again. You see, this is not always going smooth. You can always run into crashes or can't find certain values. That's just part of it. So don't worry about it, it's normal. So let me skip forward to when I found the value again. I think I got it. This one looks good. So in order to not lose the value again, let's do a pointer scan. This is the address we want to find, but for the base address, I want to do something special. In our first pointer scan about the selected skill value, we found some offset in the game logic DLL. And I make the assumption now, if that is pointing to some kind of global object, we should also be able to find the position based on that start address. Let's do that. Cheat Engine supports here to specify the address of a module as a string. So we can simply use here the game logic DLL and we restrict the area around the offset hex 97E00. That's good enough. Then we do the pointer scan and we found 99. Our original offset for the selected skill was at hex 97E48. Let's see if we find that here too. Yeah, looks like we found a few pointers from that start. So let's add a few of those to the address list and then we kill the game. Restart it, logging in, selecting character and then we attach cheat engine to the new point adventure process. This looks good. It looks like we still point to a good value. Let's have a look into the pointer scan list. As you can see, some pointer paths still point to good values, but many paths don't. So we can rescan the pointer list to filter out the paths that don't point to the correct value. And then we have 18 left. So all of these should work. And you can see they are some kind of variation from another. This gives us confidence that the pointer path we found is reliable. Now, when I was doing all of this to look for the position of the player, I actually found another address that has an interesting behavior as well. It doesn't teleport the player, but it still affects something. This one here. Let me change it. You can see that we teleported up and we stay there. We don't fall down. However, as soon as we move the camera, it gets updated and we are back down. So we actually didn't teleport. We probably just moved the camera up. And as soon as the camera was updated, we were back to normal position. Looking around this memory area, we can, of course, also find the X, Y, and Z coordinate. You can see it updating when we move around. Also, we can find four other values that seem to be connected to the view direction. And when changing them, we also seem to control where the camera looks at, which is updated as soon as we move the camera with the mouse. And when I saw that, I had an idea. I always wanted to fly around properly, but the gravity was always an issue. But it looks like we could, instead of moving the player around, we could fly the camera around. Maybe this is how we could implement flying. We would just have to prevent the game to update the camera view. So how can we do that? First, we can, of course, check what updates this variable. What writes to this memory? We can use that cool cheat engine feature again, and then we go into the game, move the camera, and there we go. This is the assembly line that writes to that value. And check out what we can do now. We can do right click, replace with code that does nothing, knob. We can overwrite this assembly instruction with knobs. Let's do that. When we now go into the game and move the mouse, nothing happens. And when we change the values of the view direction, it remains fixed. I have no clue what the values represent. They tilt and turn the camera in a weird way, but it stays fixed. We can even still walk around and pay close attention to the walking direction. Here I'm just pressing forward, but we walk into different directions. This is because I move the mouse and look into different directions and pressing forward moves there, 
but we have frozen the camera update. The camera view direction is not updated anymore. And we can do the same thing for the position of the camera. We can check that this writes the position value. There seems to be only one assembler location for that. So let's replace that one with knobs too. And now we don't seem to move at all anymore. However, we can now change the value of the position and the camera position is updated. We have frozen the camera view direction and position update. This means we should be able to create a game hack that allows us to fly around in the world. But that has to wait for next video.